Well, welcome to another Bible Truth broadcast. I'm Evangelist Tom Gillum. I'm an itinerant evangelist who believes in expositional preaching. I love to do it line upon line, precept upon precept. I like to do it in a serious form. I like to do it with enthusiasm. A joy to have you on the broadcast today. Hope you'll have a Bible handy, a notebook, something to write with. You'll find our text in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 13. We have from uh, some time been preaching at various and sundry times from verse number 7. It's laid at the back door of the great Hall of Fame chapter where he mentions the Old Testament saints. He said, Remember them which have the rule over you who have spoken unto you the word of God. He asked us to remember those who have shared with us the Bible, had an effect upon our life. But the remember here is the distant past for him, not the immediate past. All of us can think of folks that shared the word with us in the immediate past. This is a distant past. Those who laid the foundation for on which we stand. He asked us to study a couple of things about them. He said, whose faith follow? Find out what kind of faith they had. Seek to mimic it. Considering the end of their conversation. Find out how they cross the finish line and seek to do likewise. So we've been looking at some from the past, preaching on the subject, is there any among us like these? On our last broadcast, we began to look at the two Margarets. Uh, Margaret McLaughlin, uh, who died at the age of 70 in 1685, and Margaret Wilson died in 1685, at the age of 18. Both of these girls were covenanters. Uh, they were a uh, menace to the political and religious realm because they believed in salvation by grace alone, uh, by a divine call from a holy God, and they believed in the inerrancy of Scripture. And uh, they were sentenced to die at, by drowning. That's what we pick up our thought for today. Uh, we have already looked at their day. We looked at the, their uh, darkness. And uh, today I want to look at their delight. Uh, they were tried, found guilty of uh, pushing and promoting the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, the older Margaret... Uh, was to be stripped naked and hung in front of the younger Margaret. So when the tide come in, the older Margaret would drown first while the younger Margaret watched her. And uh, as the, the older Margaret was drowning, one crawled out from the crowd to the younger Margaret. What do you think of watching your friend drown? And the younger Margaret said this, I see Christ being lived out in her suffering. It is Christ in us, for he will fight the warfares alone for us. And as the younger Margaret watched the older Margaret uh, drowning in the water, she began to sing out, her favorite psalms. If you have the Bible there, Psalms 25, uh, these uh, covenanters had the psalms uh, uh, put to music. They often sung them in their services. And she began to sing the psalm of her delight, uh, Psalms uh, 25, and she began to sing to her verses 4 through 8. I was thinking about us having the, the songs committed to memory. Uh, old Sinclair Ferguson, when he pastored, had a couple in their church that had been married for 50 years. And they gave them a big to-do. And he said all the church could offer them was, Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. He said there was a family in the church, had a number of children. They were homeschoolers. Said they had committed many of the Psalms to memory and to music. And they stood up 
and uh, left us in awe as they sang a psalm that was so appropriate for this couple. Oh, I think sometimes all we have to offer the world is happy anniversary to you. But uh, the younger Margaret began to sing in a voice sweet and holy uh, the words of Psalms 25, verse number 4. Show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy past. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. Can you imagine one is dying and they're asking God, Show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy past. Lead me in thy truth. These are words here of a younger child holding on to a father's hands, asking for directions. Here in this closing hour of death, she is encouraging the older Margaret. Oh, Margaret, there is much more to be known about our Lord. I was interested in there, verse 5, in that little word, lead me. It means to bend or bow one in a particular uh, direction, to press one towards another. Oh, the younger Margaret is telling her, said, this might be working on your emotions to, to bend you away from God. But oh, let this situation of suffering bend you more towards God. Oh, my friend, as you and I in camp and involve ourselves in uh, different uh, trials and troubles, don't let them bend you away from God. Let them bend you towards our Lord. Uh, she says, uh, not only lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. That little word teach, it, it is a goading word. She is wanting to learn more. Uh, she, younger Margaret telling the old Margaret, let this goad you to get closer to God in these dying hours. And then uh, there in verse number five, she says, uh, and, and on thee do I wait all the day. Uh, she is looking, she says uh, to the older Margaret, keep looking unto him. He's coming for us. Then in verse number 6, she says, Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies. She tells the older Margaret, Remember the times of his tender mercies when he withheld from us what we deserve while giving us abundantly what we do not deserve. And she reminds her uh, not only to remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness. That loving kindness is the stooping of a superior unto an inferior, getting up under that inferior and lifting up to the level of the superior. She reminds the older Margaret, she said, Margaret, remember the day when he reached into this world and lifted us out of our sin, set us upon a solid rock and established our goings. Oh, here she is reminding the older Margaret of what God has done. Then she says this in verse number 8. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. She said to the older Margaret, let us die well. Sinners around us are watching how we die. Maybe God would use this to teach them in their way. Oh, my friend, in her dying hour, she is encouraging the older Margaret to keep lifting up high the blood-stained banner, to die well, to, to uh, uh, experience the gospel well. Even in their dying moment, not only did she sing to her uh, out of Psalms 25, but she quoted the last verses of Romans chapter number 8. They said in a careful and cheerful, uh, loud voice, she quoted these verses, As it is written for thy sake, 
We are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Even in this death, the younger Margaret's telling her, this death will not conquer us. She said, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. The younger martyrs telling the older Margaret, keep your eyes upon Jesus. Nothing will separate us from him. Not only do we see in our story their day, their devotions, uh, uh, their darkness, and their delight. But I would mention their death. After the Bible delight of quoting the verses and singing to him, uh, the crowd began to cry out uh, unto the older Margaret uh, after she had died to the younger Margaret uh, to, uh, to recant. Uh, to cry out, God save the king. They kept chanting that to the younger Margaret. And she cried back to him, God save him if he will, for he needs salvation. Oh, that was her thought of the king. Oh, save him, Lord, for he needs to be saved. The older Margaret has died now. and The younger Margaret is beginning to take on water. She is... Uh, breathing her last breath, said one of the soldiers reached down in the water and jerked her up by the hair and asked her one more time to recant. These were the last words of the younger Margaret. I will not. I am one of Christ's children. Let me go to him. Oh, they both were drowned. They wrapped their naked bodies in somewhat of a little sheet they buried them at the Winnington, Scotland churchyard, probably outside of the gate. They were covenanters, were not allowed to be buried inside the gates. It's been 330 years since these ladies died. But even listening to this broadcast, I'm sure some of us have been encouraged Keep our eyes upon the Lord. Keep walking on. I'm reminded of what our old pastor told us that led us to Christ so many years ago. Only one life will soon be passed, and only what's done for Christ will last. Is there any among us willing to give their life, not only to know Christ, but to make Him known? Well, it's been a joy to have you on the broadcast today. I remind you of our study website, TomGillum.com. We have uh, audio there. We have uh, written Bible studies there. We have hook up to our blog. We're going through the book of Matthew right now, a few verses at the time. TomGillum.com. Find our contact information there. If we can help you pray about anything, our calendar's on there. We're an itinerant evangelist. If you're interested in a meeting or you have a prayer request, you can email me at tbgillum at aol.com. Thanks for listening to the broadcast today.